Hello there, good evening everyone, and welcome to tonight's uh, Crazy Crap Painting Show. Tonight we're going to be doing watercolour paintings, um, inspired very much by a few things. Uh, one, it's cold, so I thought we could paint some colour and get some colour back into our, into the uh, sort of into life. Um, second, I recently went to a very nice art gallery in, in, in Dublin, and there's some really beautiful Monet paintings which inspired me very much, and I just... I'm, I've got a feeling for what goes these days. So tonight, well, this, this is the sort of vibe that we're going for. So this is the, um, this is what I just did about 10 minutes ago. Uh, it's still wet, but it's a watercolour painting of a kind of very sun-kissed uh, red um, flowers in a landscape. And just, I'm just going to do a quick 10 minute video, uh, basically just showing how we can get to this point. So what, what techniques do we need to, can we use to create a watercolour painting? Um, and this is the image that it's based off. So as you can see, it's a very sort of brightly lit um, landscape. And yeah, I thought I'd just quickly show how to do it. So first of all, you obviously get your water. So this is watercolour, so you get your water in a nice cup and just wet the page. So you get the whole page wet. Um, use some nice cartridge watercolour paper, uh, so, and we're using this size, about this size, so just get the whole page wet, as so, and whilst that's drying we'll just quickly refer back to the painting which we've already done, happy Yamaha Susan, thank you very much, happy Yamaha to you too, um, so in this particular painting as you can see there's the sky and there's the ground, um, we're basically going to divide two thirds sky and one third uh, ground and we're going to start off with red and what we're going to do is we're just going to make a red line like so, a red line um, just about two thirds of the page down so we get a brush get some red and, and so, like so and just do this so straight onto our wet page just do a red line like that so that's the first step, so we're just going to get our red line and then from our red line, we're then going to work the brush in like that. So you first of all create the red line, and then with the water, you just kind of merge it together like that. So that's the basis of, of course, our template that we've got here, that we, what we did before. So we started off with the red line there, and then we allowed that red line to sink in. And then what we're going to do is, because this is going to be flowers, in the, in, in, in the bottom section, where there's the red line, we're just going to get the brush and we're just going to go dab, 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 dab. And the more dabs that we do, we're going to dab the brush to create the impression that there are some kind of red flowers, basically, in the bottom half of the painting. So we get the brush, like so, and we just go dab, 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 like this. And we just dab into the paper with the red to create the impression of uh, red flowers. So first of all, the first step of course is the red line. The second step after the red line is that you just allow the water to just go down. And whilst it's still wet, get changed into a thicker brush and just dab red uh, into kind of small circular dots with the brush. Just dab, 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 dab into, into the paper um, to create the impression that there are some flowers. And this is the sort of finish that you'll get. Just like that. It's very, 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 very simple. And that's obviously what we have at the bottom half there. As you can see. If that makes any sense. Now, whilst those red dabs are drying, we get a different, we just clean our brush, get some yellow. And we're just gonna get a nice yellow horizon. So basically, on top of our red line, we're gonna get our brush and get some yellow. And we're just gonna mix the yellow into the painting, seeping out of the red line, as though to give the impression um, that there's this kind of sunrise-like, um, or yeah, sunrise, sunset feel um, going on. And because there's an orange that will slowly emerge, on top of the yellow and the orange, we'll get some blue. Uh, and I'll show you just now what that means. So there, as you can see, this is the stage we're at so far. So we've got our orange and we've got our yellow, and then we've got our red. And basically, if you've just joined, this is how it's made. 
So you start off with the red line. You get the page wet, first of all. <laughs> get the page nice and wet. Get our nice red line as such. After the red line, dip and dab the brush into the into, 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 into the piece of paper to give the impression of these flowers. Then get a different brush, still wet the page, and get the yellow to the seep across slowly. And once this is now drying, we're gonna try and work in the sort of, as, as you can see, the top quadrant of the painting before the blue. We're just gonna try and get that blue. Hi, Mum, thanks for joining from downstairs. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a quick show today, just showing how to do the watercolors. We're just gonna now focus on how to get the blue uh, in the top half. So because blue is the complementary colour of orange, it works quite nicely to just apply the blue straight away. Uh, no rush, no worries at all. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get the, the brush and just gonna mix the blue into the yellow. It will give a kind of turquoise feel. So, um, I, um, it's watercolour paint, Susan, yeah. I mean, you could use water down acrylics if you want. It would basically, the, the finish would be very, very similar and the effect would be very much the same. But I would advise, um, I would advise, well, actually, if you are going to use water down acrylics, just do the same process. So get some really, really thin acrylics, put them into separate jars or separate areas of some kind of, um, yeah, onto some kind of plate and just mix them through. So once you've applied the blue, that's then the finish that you get. So the first step, if you're using water and acrylics or, or watercolour, um, is just do the red line, th two thirds of the way down the painting. Um, then, on that red line, just mix that red into the canvas to give the impression of those kind of dotted red flowers. Um, then do the um, yellow to give the impression of the horizon line. And then slowly mix the blue. Welcome Pradeep. Pradeep, no, my man, did you watch the League Cup final? What a game, Ibrahimovic. Oh my God, what a header, smashed it. I was dancing with my dad. Um, in the in the living room, what a game! What an absolutely smashing game of football to watch. Anyway, so um, what you then do is this is of course still going to be wet. So at this stage, what you do is I'm just going to demonstrate like this. So you have the blue, and this is all still wet. So what you're going to do is you just tickle the painting with the brush, so that the yellow and the blue are mixed together. And basically, it's all about these mid tones. So you have the yellow which comes here, and the orange, and then what you do is you just tickle through and it will create the gradation from the blue to the yellow with this mid-green and that's quite a sort of natural sunrise, sunset uh, vision. Um, and then you do that, and then basically whilst this is just drying through, as you can see, what a lad, <laughs> it's such a lad, you get a, a different brush, you get quite a lot of red on your brush this time, quite a lot of red. And you could actually create some defined circle, circle-like, well, flowers, you know? Just really kind of focus on creating some more visible flowers. So, in order to create perspective in this painting, in watercolour painting like this, it can help that in, in the foreground, so I'll show you here, in the foreground, you create larger flowers. You see? Larger, more, more defined flowers. And then towards the horizon, it's basically a big fat mush of red uh, paint, and that gives that impression of scale. And by doing that, um, you can achieve quite a good quality finish uh, in the painting. So we're just doing the red dabs, close up. And what can be really cool to give the impression of different coloured flowers, because obviously you're never going to get a full uh, bed of flowers on a field all of the identical colour. So one thing that can help is that whilst you're building up this texture and whilst you're building up this red, in the middle uh, of these flowers, get a smaller brush, a different brush, and get some orange, and mix that orange next to it. So basically there's like, the, and the, what the orange will do is it'll give you a little bit of added depth, and also because you're introducing orange, it will heighten the, the boldness of the red. Um, yeah, so the red will basically become more bold and more heightened. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically the idea. And then what you can also do is, of course, you know, you create a bit of flowers, but you, the flowers have stems. Just get blue, bl blue, like this. So you've got the reds, and then just do dabs of blue down like that. Little kind of hints, little lines of blue. There was actually a really nice Monet painting I saw 
in the, in the, art, in the art gallery in Dublin, which had this blue, and I learned a little bit from it, and it gives that impression. And this was happened. This was on water, so it was a different kind of technique, but you can kind of use it the same way um, in your paint. And what you can do is you can just kind of tickle now the blue there, and it just kind of creates this illusion that yes, okay, there's this red, but the, the, the flowers have a bottom. <laughs> Uh, and that this is kind of stems. Yeah, great. Honestly, what a lad. Uh, pretty, such a header. Now, the one thing to do now to really cut the distance is that we're going to put a little forest, a clump of trees, we'll call it a clump of trees, um, on the horizon line. And we're just going to get some nice green, some dark green. And we're just going to create this impression of a nice forest emerging in the distance. But we really want to create... So for the finish, we're going to get a small brush, nice small brush, and we're just going to really just get a nice red line. Like that. That's the kind of, that's what we've got at the moment. You see? So we've got the yellow at the bottom, the orange seeping up. We've got the trees in the foreground, just there. We've got those red trees, and at the bottom you can see the problem, we've got this white. So what we're going to do is to resolve that, we're going to get a nice big brush, and we're just going to create some larger areas, patches, I'll call them, of red, um, to create the kind of distinctions between the foreground and the... Um, and the, the foreground, and the front, obviously, and then the, the regression of space. Um... Oh guys, if any, I think I went to see an absolutely smashing exhibition of artwork of Caravaggio very, 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 very recently, and it was amazing. And I'd recommend you all to check this guy out. He's an absolute genius. Foreshortening quality of painting, just unbelievable. Caravaggio, check him out. It, uh, I, I, obviously, this 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 style of painting is absolutely nothing like Caravaggio, but I would always recommend people to check him out. Really good. Now, what we're going to do is create the clouds. So at the moment, we've obviously got this quite sort of harmonious looking little piece. Now we're going to try and create the clouds. And what you do is you get burnt sienna, which is a quite a nice colour. And you want to create this idea that the sun is emerging. So what you do is you kind of imagine this circle on the horizon line. Just get the brush and just pitter patter the burnt sienna with the brush through the uh, page. Like, and I'll show you just now what I mean by that. Burnt Sienna, it's basically a posh word for brown. Um, welcome Mr. Donald, how are you doing mate? Long time no see, hope you're keeping well. Um, yeah, and then next to those dark brown but Siennas, put some dark blues. And basically the, the, the horizon line that will always get light, dark at the top, lines at the bottom so to work towards the sun. Um, and just now I'll show you how this will look as such. So, here is a painting that we've just done. So, for those watching, I'll just summarize the key points of what we've done. So, you start off with a red line, uh, two thirds down here. You get the brush and you wet the, page, the red line down, push the red down. Then you get another brush and you get some more red. Dib, dib, dab, dib, dab, dib, dab, dib, define all these like kind of, sort of flowers. Then, on top of the horizon line, here, you get some yellow and you work the yellow with some quite rapid brushwork. Then, more calmly, you add some more sophisticated layers of red. Then, you get the brush again and you just add this idea of clumps of trees. <coughs> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. And then you've got the yellow here and then obviously you add the blue throughout, which creates that green coming through the burnt sienna, creating the illusion of clouds. And there you go. So, I'll take a picture of that, I'll post it up onto Facebook, to the wall. Very appreciative of your comments, I hope you've learned something new. And to summarise in three key points, regression of space, always put the more detail towards the front of the painting, to the back. Um, Complementary colours, reds, greens, uh, oranges, blues, and have lots of fun. I hope you enjoyed it, have a good night, happy Yamaha to all those who know what I mean, and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye! And also, if you want to, you know, have a go yourself, pick up a brush, pick up some paper, pick up some paint, have it, you know, post it on my wall, share it, have a do. Love to see how people are getting on. Bye guys, good night.